Good morning, church. God bless you. How many excited to be in the house of the Lord in this morning? Yes, would you please stand with me and put your hands together? Come on.
Hallelujah.
When we draw near to God, He draws near to us. And one of the best ways, one of the amazing ways that we can draw near to the Lord is through worship, is through humility, humbling ourselves before Him and just recognizing His sovereignty, recognizing His power over our lives. And so I say that today is such a great opportunity for you to surrender to God in humility, for you to just worship His name in humility and recognize the power that He has over your life. You know, we sing that, you, you, what a powerful name it is. And we've sang it so much that sometimes we just, we're just saying words at a point. We're not really like taking in what it really means to say, you know what, no, 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 God, you have the power to change my situation. You have the power to do the things that I cannot do. You have the power to do the impossible. The things that I cannot do in my own strength, Lord God, you have the power to do it. Yes, your name is powerful because you conquered death. Yes, you are powerful because you were risen on the third day. You are powerful. There is nothing that you cannot do. If you can raise yourself from death in three days, what could you not do in one day in my life? In one moment in your presence, what could you not do, oh God? Yes, would you lift your hands with me right now? Come on, let's praise him in this morning. Come on, lift and shout, shout to him. Yes, be unafraid. Be bold in the presence of the Lord. You are in the presence of God. Forget about anyone else around you. Come on, lift your head, lift your voice. Lift your voice to Jesus.
of power in your life, power over your situation, power over your health, power over your family, power. God is able to do above and beyond what we can even ask or imagine. And so today we call on the name that is above every single name, above our own name, Jesus. Sometimes we think that we can get something, get somewhere because of who we are. I'm sorry. Don't you know? Did you not hear? Have you not heard, church, here and online, that the God that we serve is the God that is able? And if you are anything today, it is because of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That his name should be bared on our foreheads, on our daily wear as we go about as we go into work as we drive on the street his name is the name that we need to bear we need to stand for him not our own last name not our own patriarchy matriarchy whatever archy you want to call it it's the name of Jesus that makes the difference when you stand before the gates of heaven or hell you're not gonna say I'm, I'm part of the Fabre family they're going to ask you, who do you belong to? Who, who paid the price for you? Anybody? Anybody paid the price for you? Is his name Jesus? Because I can't stand you better go to heaven. Because if that name is who you represent here today and there, you are getting somewhere. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is the name that is above every single name want to get anywhere in life anywhere in life in any every situation in your life let the name of Jesus be well represented in your life today and forevermore how many can say amen to that amen we love you Jesus we love you Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah Woo. you may be seated church we are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How many are glad to be in the house of Jesus? Amen. I am glad to be here. I'm glad to be back. Uh, I'm glad to see each and every one of you, those of you that are in person and those of you that are watching online. Um, I know there's a lot of people um, taking vacations and, and time off and it's much needed, I know. And, and so this month of August, we're sort of in repair mode as we gear up for the fall because God has so many amazing things. I hope you don't miss out. Amen. You know, the fact that you're here, you know, give yourselves props and you're giving yourself, you're giving God the priority that he deserved. And so this uh, month, we're starting off a new series and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. Recently, I walked into a store. I can't remember which store it was and I saw someone that, that looked up at me and um, they noticed, they recognized me as the pastor of the church that they visited. And this guy just blurted out, he didn't even say hello, he just blurted out. And he said, oh my gosh, I'm so far from God. And then the very next thing he said, he said, I had no idea how much I miss going to church. He said, I'm so far from God, I had no idea how much I missed going to church. COVID um, came and stirred up the pot, didn't it? <laughs> And things are still different today. How many of you miss the good old days? Anybody miss the good old days? Remember the good old days when you could like travel and make plans and go anywhere without a mask? Anybody remember that? <laughs> it's unprecedented times we're still living in. And people today are still tense. They're still agitated. They're uneasy. Some people are terrified and angry. People feel disconnected at times. They feel hopeless. They're lacking confidence 
in the future, questioning everything and everybody. I, I get a daily, probably every couple days, the question, you know, is there a conspiracy pastor? Who's behind this? Who can we trust? <laughs> Who's telling the truth? What should I do? A lot of people are slipping back into destructive habits and, and bad rhythms. And so many people in some form or another would just say, life is just not working the way I want it to work. And there's a heaviness. There is an uneasiness. And, and I know that you could see it. You could probably feel it. And we try to cover it up with vacation. We try to cover it up with sun tanning. I don't know. We try to cover it up with, with so many things, right? We're going, so we're going into this series called What Your Life Is Missing. Because I believe God has something to say about to us so that we don't feel like we are missing anything. Because the one who completes us, his name is Jesus, and he's, he hasn't changed, right? He doesn't change. He hasn't changed pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what your life might be missing is what we're going to be kicking off today. And we'll finish off this month of August with this series. So let's take advantage of this moment together. And would you bow your heads with me this morning and let's pray. Father, we ask that by the power of your spirit and the truth of your word, that you would help us discover today what we are missing, Lord. And so that we could know you more inti intimately and so we could serve you more passionately and all of this we pray by the power of Jesus' mighty name and all God's people say, amen. amen. You know, um, our preaching team was bringing the message for a few weeks and we praise God for them, right? Let's give them a round of applause. Yes, I enjoyed and was blessed by every single message and that, that they delivered. And I hope that you discover some things in your life that might be bringing poisonous venom into your spirit. And know that the antidote to all of that is right behind me. His name is Jesus, Jesus. So yes, you know, it's, and I hope that you enjoyed it, but at the same time you applied the word of God. I was also away. Some of you um, know that I was away, I'm, but I'm back, baby. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back. Um, last week, our, our family took a, a much needed uh, vacation, rest and relaxation, but I miss church. I miss church. I was watching uh, at the airport, actually, on that Sunday. So that's how much I love church. I love being with you all. And some of you have come back from a few weeks off of vacation or time off. And, and some of you have even told me, I had no idea how much I miss going to church. Somebody say church. church. You know, for those of you that are online, why don't you type that right into your chat? Type in the word church. Because I want to talk to you today about the church. And, and give you a little bit of context from scripture, from the word of God, about God's perspective on the church. And the root word that's translated as church in the New Testament, you know how many times it appears? It appears 107 times. So I think the word church is kind of important to Jesus, right? And the word is ecclesia. And it means E-K, the, the, the synonym E-K uh, means out of. And then klesia comes from the root, root word calling. So it literally means out of the calling. This word means to gather and to be called out. And that is who we are. We are the church. We are gathered together to be strengthened and to be called out, ecclesia. So you, you and I are Ecclesia, amen? We are the church. Josie, you are Ecclesia, amen? Anna, you are Ecclesia. A and Jessica, you are Ecclesia. Israel, you are Ecclesia. The first time that the word Ecclesia is mentioned, and I know this is not a coincidence because there are no coincidences in the Lord, by the way. Um, the word Ecclesia, the first time it's mentioned in the New Testament, is actually mentioned by, who do you think it's mentioned by? Good guess, good guess. Um, Jesus mentioned the church the very first time. And Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he gave them a pop quiz. And he asked them a question. He said, he, he asked his disciples, who, who do people say that I am? 
who do people say that I am? And the disciples were like guessing and, and, and they were trying and they're like, oh, some people say you're John the Baptist and other people say you're, you're Elijah or you're Jeremiah, you're one of the prophets. And then Jesus turned the pop quiz straight on to Peter and he said, Peter, you tell me, who do you say that I am? And the spirit of God gave Peter wisdom. How many know that you ask the Spirit of God and he will give you wisdom? How many know that? And so the Spirit of God gave Peter wisdom and Peter said, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to Peter, he said this, he said the first time the church was mentioned, Jesus said it in Matthew 16, verse 18. He said, on this rock, I will build my what? My church. Say it with me. On this rock, I will build my church. And it says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia, my church, because it is his church. He said, notice he says, my church, because Jesus loves his church. He cares about his church. And you and I are the church. He loves and he wants to build his church. We are the church that Jesus wants to build. And I want to tell you for just a moment about some events that have happened at church in my life, around church or because of the church in my own life. And I just jotted down a few just randomly thoughts as I was preparing this, the things that came to mind. And to give you a little bit of context, my family grew up in the church. My, my dad is a, was a pastor. My grandpa, he, he had a church start in his house. My uncles, they're all pastors. So I grew up with church in me, around me, right? So when I was little, I remember um, at church they were doing a Bible competition. Now you see where the competitive comes from, right? The competitiveness, right? And so they asked a question. They said it out loud. And they, they said, in what state were Adam and Eve in? And I blurted out. I was six years old. I was like, Naked! right? <laughs> and the answer was actually sin, but I wasn't wrong, right? They were, that's what the state that they were in. But the point is I was six and I already knew so much of the Bible. I said it in Spanish, by the way, in Cuera, which was even funnier. So everybody was <laughs> laughing. And so, and the, the, I already knew these Bible stories that today have shaped my knowledge and love and trust in Jesus. And I followed my dad everywhere, everywhere he went. We would go visit churches early in the morning. We would have services late at night, vigils and, and prayer nights and church on the streets, on wheels, church in the jails, uh, whatever. No matter the denomination, we would sing out loud in some places and sing softly at other churches. And, and I met many people from different cultures and different languages, Hispanic and blacks and Haitians and Africans and Brazilians and Jews and I learned about diversity and multiculturalism and multi-ethnicity in where? The church. I learned about leadership and teamwork in the church too. I sang on a worship team and I learned to play instruments and I became a youth leader. I wasn't perfect, but I learned to value working together with others and then becoming passionate about leading others to Jesus and towards a community and fellowship. Where did I learn all this? In the church. church. I met my husband. Where do you think I met him? In the church. That's right. Yes, that chocolate truffle stand, sitting right there. <laughs> Good. I like chocolate truffles, you know. We learn to become one and, and how to love in the church. And we're still learning, right, babe? We're still learning. We've had three kids two of which are baptized, where? In the church. And if you know my kids today, they're not perfect, right? They're not perfect, but all of them love Jesus. And they all faithfully serve and love in the church. How did that happen? Not by coincidence. We spend time. We dedicate time to God in the church, living and sharing with other believers and being sharpened in, a, in the church. And I give a lot of credit to many of you our church family who helped disciple my kids in some way, whether in Grace Point Kids or in Spark Student Ministries. Because sometimes I tell my kids and they won't believe me, right? 
and then some of you tell them the same thing and they believe you, right? Because that's how kids are. They'll listen. But together, right, we help disciple each other's children. Where do we do that? In the church. And they too love God and they're finding their passions and their calling. Where are they finding it? In the church. They're developing their strengths. And now they're getting older, and as they develop relationships, where do you think they'll bring their significant others and will serve in Jesus' name? Where? To the church, right? You got it. (laughs) Where I can keep a very close eye on them, all for the glory of God. Hallelujah. (laughs) We felt called to start a church, you know, years ago, and that's where the fun really got heated up. We saw miracles upon miracles. We're still seeing them. And we experienced heartbreaks upon heartbreaks the highest highs and the lowest lows, and we continue to love Jesus in his church. And our whole life, honestly, everything that I can find that has anything meaningful in it, the relationships, the friendships that I formed, the, anything that of meaning I go and find, where was it connected? In the church. It's the work of God through his church. And it's not because I'm a pastor. It's because I'm a follower of Jesus, and I'm a part of God's people who he calls his church. And here's how God uses the church. Jesus says, I will build my church because he uses his church to build us up. Say that with me. I will build my church. Amen. God uses his church to build us up. I want to talk to you today about the church. I want to do a little test on you. I want to share something with you to see how it connects with your spirit today. I want to see if this moves you, if this sparks you, if this stirs you up, or maybe it just bores you. I don't know. I'm going to show you a portion from the Old Testament. It's Proverbs 31. Those of you that have been around the church uh, some time, ladies especially, you know that Proverbs 31 is about a godly woman, right? There are unbelievably high standards about for this godly woman, which I'm sure makes men glad that they're not women, right? Because these standards are hard to live up to. I'm just saying, but these are amazing standards of a godly person. And there's 22 verses about the godly wife. And what's amazing about these 22 verses, if you didn't know, is they're actually an acrostic poem. Um, You know, what it means is each of the 22 verses is actually one of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. I don't know if many of you knew that. And it spells out all these beautiful qualities of the godly bride of Jesus, right? For example, if I were to describe the women in our church, I would say A, B, C. The women in our church are all adorable. They are B, beautiful. And C, they are Christ-like, right? Let's give our women here a round of applause. Yes. And that's what an acrostic is. And so what we need to know is anytime you read the Bible, anytime you open up the Bible, all the scriptures point to one character, one hero, and his name is Jesus. You look in the Old Testament and you can see images, all prophetic utterances of Jesus. If I were to ask you, if somebody were to ask you who's the main character of the Bible, you're going to say it's Jesus, yes, Jesus is the main character. And even in the Old Testament, you see images of Jesus, images of God and images of his church, like Song of Solomon. It's a, it's a love story between a man and a woman, but it's also a metaphor between a portrayal of God's love for his church, for his bride. And so I want to show you today in Proverbs 31, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, and it's a potential metaphor or a series of metaphors about the church. So let me explain what I'm going to do before I read it. When we look at the husband, what I'm going to do is put in parentheses Jesus, okay? And as this, because this husband represents Jesus, all right? And anytime we see the godly woman in Proverbs 31, I'm going to put in the bride of Christ Jesus, who is the church, right? And so let me just demonstrate so you'll know clearly what I'm doing here. Look at the metaphor in the Old Testament. Please put up verse 10. We'll start in verse 10. And this is what the real verse text says. It says, who could ever find a wife like this one? She is a woman of strength and mighty valor. She's full of wealth and wisdom. And the price paid for her was greater than many jewels. 
Now here's how I edit it. You can see in parentheses, here's what I put. It says, who could ever find a church like this one? Christ's church is full of strength and mighty valor. See if this does anything to you emotionally. The church is full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for the church was greater than many jewels. Verse 13 and 14. The church searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. The church gives out revelation, truth to feed others. The church tastes and experiences a better substance and her shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night is. She, the church, is known by her extravagant generosity to the poor. For she always reaches out her hands to those who are in need. Her husband, Jesus, is famous and admired by all. And even her works of righteousness she does for the benefit of her enemies. I edited this next verse, but you'll see what I did. It says, there are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended above them all. Popularity can be misleading and followers, wealth and worldly clout is vain and so quickly fades. But the church, the bride of Christ, lives in wonder, awe, and fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity. Does that connect with you today? If it does, it's probably because you recognize that you just don't go to church. You are the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And he's been building your life, not so you can be more about you, but to be part of a bigger calling, a bigger mission, to be called out of this world into a larger mission for your life that is connected with everyone else that's a part of his church. Does this connect with you? If it doesn't, what is missing from your life that this does not connect with you? Why is your life maybe not working the way that you think that it should? Why is it that you're feeling disconnected, alone, trapped? Hopeless, desperate, what's missing from your life? Maybe it's the church. Maybe the church is missing you. Jesus said, I will build my church. I want to suggest to you a very real shift in your mindset. And please hear me when I tell you this is so much more than a play on words. This is a change in your thinking to truly understand church for what Jesus gave, for which Jesus gave his life for, and the church for which he is building, which is you and I. He, we don't just go to church. We don't just go to church on Sundays or go to church on prayer nights. If you can go to church, you can also leave the church. You don't just go to church. It's a change in mindset. The church is not a destination. The church is an identity. It is who we are. The church is not this building. It is a people. It is the people of God. And that's why we don't just go to church. We are the church. And we are here to, de to demonstrate to the world what it means to be saved, to be called out, to be full of hope, to be full of destiny. You know, what's profoundly interesting to me is that the first time Jesus mentions the church, he says, I'll build my church. And then he didn't say, I'll build my church so that they can care for the widows. That's a good thing. And that's important to him. He mentions it in the Bible. He didn't, but he doesn't say that. He says, he doesn't say, I'll build my church and there's going to be peace on earth. Although that's what he came to bring is peace on earth. But what he does say, he says, I will build my church. You can put up verse 10 again and of Matthew. Um, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Did you notice that? 
In other words, the first time he talks about his church, he mentions that there is a very visible, very clear, very plain reminder that you and I, the church, we're engaged in a war. And the gates of hell is where your enemy comes from, by the way. What's missing from your life? Maybe you're not engaged in the war, making a difference, pushing back the forces of darkness like we sing on Sundays. Because you have been created by God, called out for a mission by God to do and represent and be his church. Maybe you recognize, man, it's crazy out there. You notice that. We're in a war, but I'm not engaged. I'm just passively taking the blows. Right? Wondering, why, why do I feel disconnected? What, what's going on with my spirit? Why, why am I, do I feel like I have no purpose? I have a job. I have a career. I have a home. I have a beautiful family. I have, I have money. These things should make me happy, but I'm not. What's missing? Some of you would be wise to recognize that there is someone who is attacking you whose mission it is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And some of you, your love, your joy has been stolen from right under your nose. And some of you have been feeling distant and you're blaming everything else, everyone else, even the church. And some of you, you're isolated and you're wondering, why am I losing? I keep trying to gain and I keep losing. I keep trying to push forward and I keep being pushed back. Well, we are in a battle. Jesus said that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are in a battle. And in order to win the battle, you cannot go without an army, <laughs> without others who have your back and you have their back. We are to engage in the battle as the church. And our battle, listen to me, it's not against each other. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not against your family that, that irks you. It's not against your boss that doesn't do as you, as you want. It's not against people. Paul said it's not against flesh and, bl and blood. Your battle is not against mask wearers versus non-mask wearers, right? Come on, somebody. Your battle is not against who voted one way or voted the other way or who posted this and who didn't post that. Our battle is against spiritual forces of this dark world that come from the gates of hell. But you and I, we are the church. We need not forget that. We are called to be a light. A light in the way we think. A light in the decisions we make. A light in the words that we speak. A light in the way that we act. A light wherever we go to be a force of love and to push back the kingdom of darkness. Listen to me. What's missing in your life? What's missing in your life? Maybe it's the church. Maybe the church is missing you. Maybe you're like, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God all, and all this stuff. But you're, you're not engaged. You're not engaged in this war. You are called to be the church. You have been called out as ecclesia. You've been, and some of you have been content to sit and watch as spectators from the sidelines. And so you're wondering, why do I feel disconnected? Why, why is my spirit not like it used to be back and whenever? I don't feel like I have meaning. Well, have you been sit? Have you been the church? Have you represented Jesus? I don't know what this would mean for you right now. I don't know what it means. Because right now the world is different. I get it. So it may have to look a little different than what it's been like in the past. If all you can do is maybe come once in a while physically into the church and the rest you watch online, remotely, whatever it is, let me just encourage you. I plead with you. I urge you as the church to, to be the church and engage in this spiritual battle. Because if you just sit back, you will be blown away from the shifting winds of this culture that we live in today. Don't sit back. Don't settle for what the enemy wants to steal and kill and destroy for your, from your life. 
What might be missing maybe is just the power of community when you, because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. Some of you will fight this all your lives. You think that you can go into life on your own and you keep messing up. You keep falling flat on your face. Would you get the lesson already? Together we are strengthened. Together we lift each other up in love and, and the spirit convicts us and corrects us and encourage it, it, we encourage each other. You cannot do it alone. You've already tried that. Don't go it alone. i never seen an army of one. Have you seen an army of one? Hi, I represent the kingdom of God. I'm here by myself. Like what? Who are you going to? Nobody's going to. The enemy's going to laugh in your face. But when the army of God... All the believers show up. It's millions upon millions of people praying and engaging in war and saying, we stand for who Jesus is. We stand for his light and his love. And we stand for conviction. And we're here to conquer sin. And enemy, you have no grounds over my family. Enemy, you have no grounds over this community. Enemy, you have no grounds because we are the church. Hallelujah. You can't do it alone. I, I got to have your back and you got to have mine. Can't fight alone. Maybe for you, you need prayer. Or you, want, you need to engage by, by being in prayer. You, can, you can't do, you know, spiritual warfare on your own all the time. You, you need to get down on your knees. You pray and heaven opens up and the power of God descends upon your life on this earth. And you ask for his will as it is in heaven and you engage in prayer. But don't just sit by and watch the news and all day long and just be blah, blah, blah. And, and now the world is coming to an end. Somebody asked me that this week. You know, the world is coming to an end. I said, oh, it might be. But you know what? I'm gonna, the, if the world is coming to an end, Jesus is going to find me praying. Do something about it. <laughs> don't just talk about it. Listen, you have spiritual gifts. You're part of the body of Christ. Every part of the body of Christ is important. So pray. Don't pray alone. You don't have to pray alone. Pray with others. That's why we have prayer service. We can do this together. We can experience the power of heaven as we pray in unity here on earth. So let's pray. And if you're doing, all you're doing is like streaming a message every now and then, whenever you think of it, that's not engaging. That's not the church that Jesus said he was going to build up. That's not being the church. That's going to church. Guess what? There's some weeks that you're not going to feel it. Anybody ever experienced that? That there's a Saturday or a Sunday morning and you're like, I'm just not feeling church today. That's not, that's not uh, what God has called us to be. We are the church. We don't go to church. We are the church. And you're not just using your spiritual gifts somewhere and for no reason. Guess what? 70% of us are not even using our gifts in the church right now. That's the latest stat that I got in the pastor's meeting. Because we're not coming. We've decided that it's safer for us to go on vacation. It's safer for us to go to work. But uh, engage with others in the church? No, that's not safe. Who lied to you? When did you get caught up? I'm going to tell you, your enemy from the gates of hell, he's very happy. He's been up to no good, and he's trying to keep you down and alone and isolated and disconnected and spiritually void so that you walk around like zombies. Isn't there a zombie movie where they walk around, right, with pointlessness, right? And I'm going to tell you, use what God has given you to make a difference in the church because you actually serve someone else. And guess what? You are and you will be fulfilled when you use your gifts to make a difference because we are the church. So you can pray. There's no excuses because we've been praying online, right? And over Zoom and we've been praying outdoors if you don't want to be indoors. So why not join us in prayer one time a month? Or could it be that we're just not engaged? You're stuck not being the church. And so you're not being built up like Jesus said he wants to do. And then we're wondering, why do I feel so bad? Why do I feel so distant? Why am I lonely? Why, why do I feel so defeated? Well, what your life is missing is 
is the building up that Jesus was talking about in Matthew. And he does that building up with us because we are the church. So you can pray. You can also give of your time. You can give of your talent. And you can give of your treasure. For God loved the world that he gave. One of the ways you mo you're most like God is when you give. And thank God. Thank you to those who have been giving to the church in so many ways. Thank you for those who planned the community barbecue and, and the worship testimony uh, Sunday. And let me tell you, if you haven't subscribed to this blessing of giving, I urge you to give, to join in, and give with a heart of obedience, and, then, and watch God open up the floodgates of heaven, because that is his blessing, because he wants to build you up, because you are his church. You can pray, you can give, you can also invite people. You can invite them online. Guess what? Anybody can come to church online. Anybody in the world can have access, right? You can invite people back to church. Listen, here's the deal. As a church in a war, and when you wake up from a war, you wake up with a search and rescue mentality. Who, who can I reach today? That's, my, that's my, how I wake up every week. Even while I'm on vacation, I need to reach out to so-and-so. I need to go talk with, so I need to give them a call. I need to invite them back. I need to pray for them. Because we are ambassadors. We are called out to be the church. Ambassadors of God. Called to help people who need to be reconciled to God. Because the church is not a place that we go to. The church is who we are. Who are we as a church? We are prayerful. We pray in the park, we pray at the church, we are connectional. We have connection groups, we have community barbecues, we are generous because we truly believe it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And that's why during the height of COVID, we did a couple of relief funds to, as a church to help those who couldn't work because of their illness. So we're helping those that are in need. And some of you, some of you are involved as a church. You are the church doing this, and my prayer is that many more of you, if not all of you, can be the church and get involved because we believe that the local church is the hope of the world, that we can do infinitely more together than we can apart because we are the church. And as a church, we're in a war. We're in a war. There's a war. There's a battle for who will build you up? Who is it that you're gonna choose to build you up? Is it the world led by the gates of hell? Who's trying to kill, destroy, defeat you, put you down, make you spiritually void so you are walking around without purpose? Is that who will, you will allow to build you up in your life, in your marriage? Or will you let Jesus build you up? And as God's church, we want Jesus to build us up. Because we are the, his church. What is missing in your life? Maybe it's the church. And the church, as a church, we need to be full of faith and not fear. That God has, because God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? He's given us a spirit of power and love and sound mind. And so today... God is reminding us that we are the church. And some of us have fallen astray. And I'm not talking about whether you came to church today. That's a good step. It's a great step. But are we being the church in and out of this place? As we watch online, are we the church? Or have we been led by other things, being built up by other things in our lives? And God is reminding us today that we are the church and he wants to build us up. In order to be built up in Jesus, we need to be connected to him, the source of strength. Would you mind standing to your feet this morning? If you are at home in your living room, would you mind getting up off your sofa or, or get out of your bed for just a moment and just stand to your feet?
Because I believe that God is reminding us, if you are on vacation and you're watching, stand up to your feet. God is reminding us that we are the church. You know that song by Kirk Franklin, right? We are the church. We ain't going nowhere. (laughs) We are the bride of Christ Jesus, and we are united. We're standing against our enemy whose mission it is to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we are united around this one mission. Would you join us? And that mission is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. Paul said in Ephesians 3.20, and I leave you with this today. He said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than all we can ask, think, or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us, within you, within us, within you, his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory, where? In the church. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Who are we? We're the church. We are the bride of Jesus. Known for our generosity, known for the love that we give to others, We're seeking justice. We're expressing love. We are not backing down in the face of opposition, but we are taking this message of hope, taking this message of peace. We're taking this message of strength, of wisdom, of courage, of valor, of unity everywhere that we go because we are the what? The church. What's missing from your life? Maybe it's the church and maybe the church is missing you. And as you prepare your hearts to worship, I would love to invite you today to engage again, to engage in this spiritual battle. I want to invite you again today to step in, step in and step up because of the one who gave his life for you and for me. His name is Jesus. Our only reasonable response is to give our lives to him. And if you can see it, if you can feel it, he is moving and he is calling you out, Ecclesia. He is ready to build you up. And let me tell you, the building up is a lifetime process. It's a lifetime process. You're built up yesterday. He can build you up today. He will build you up tomorrow, but he won't do it without your will. Will you be his church? Who builds the church? It's not your money. It's not your career. It's not your girlfriend. It's not your relationship. It's not your cell phone, by the way. Who builds the church? It's Jesus. He is good. He does a good job building his church, and we are his church. So would you just join me today as the worship team leads us in this next commitment song? And let's sing it out to the Lord with all our hearts, declaring how great he is, declaring that we are his church. Let's sing out with all our voices in unity as the Lord, the Holy Spirit, We can ask him right now, would you fill me? Would you show me? Would you change me? Would you you please forgive me for the sins in my life that have separated me from you? I want to be your church, and I want to represent you today. Let's sing out to the Lord together. The splendor of the Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, 
and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice sing this chorus with me how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and don't we'll see how great how great our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. But God had three in one. She goes, she goes, you know, some people miss the church. Some of us, we miss you. We need you in the church. 
Where are you in the church? So God can be manifested through you and people can see how great our God is. Manetti was standing right next to you. I was like, she better say, she better say that. <laughs> it, it, it was like, oh, wow. We miss you in the church. We need you in the church. How has church changed you? How? How has it changed you? How has God used these wonderful people to make a difference in your life? We are the church. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's up to you. We are impactful. We are called. We are destined. God has called us his children. And we are here as a rescue team. I loved that you said that. She wakes up in the morning and she's like, who can I rescue today? Who can I call? Who can I reach out to? What can I do? And that is the heart of a worshiper. The Lord says he's calling those to worship him in spirit and in truth. That doesn't mean it's just music, right? Worship isn't just singing songs. It is a lifestyle. It is what you're doing in your daily walk. It is who you're talking to. It is how you are using your gifts to help someone else, right? That is what's important at the end of the day. It has nothing to do with stages and lights and four walls. The church isn't a place. It is who you are. Amen? Sometimes we get stuck in that rut, you know? Like, oh, I'm going to church. No, you're going to the temple. You're going to the house of the Lord. But you are the church. You are the church love that. We want to uh, welcome you to Grace Point Church this morning. If you are a first time guest, my name is Josie and I'm kind of the silly, one of the silly hosts. <laughs> and they're all used to me, but I wanted to welcome you guys this morning. Um, whether it's your first time in person or here online, um, I just want to say welcome. We have a gift for you. So please text the number on the screen, 978-528-0300. Um, it's kind of like the overall phone number for pretty much anything. You want to say hello to us. You want to, you know, have your next step with Christ. You want to give. You want to do whatever. You're going to use that number, 978-528-0300. Um, we want to get to know you. We want to help you in your walk. If you feel that you need a friend, if you feel that, you know, you have something going on, if you have a friend that's going through something and you want us to pray for that, we have an entire team to help you do that. Just send us a text to 978-528-0300 and we would love to get to know you, to help pray for you, whatever um, your need may be. We are here for that. That is what we do as a church. Um, we also want to thank everyone for giving uh, to our church through Grace Point. Uh, everything that we do here, whether in person, outside, um, the events that we have, everything goes through your giving, and we want to thank you for that. And there's two secure ways to give. I know COVID has put the kibosh on so many ways. You know, we'd, we'd come with our little ofrenda, right, in our pockets, and, and we'd like to put the envelope, and, you know, old school, right? Um, but but we, we, you know, we're, we're saddling up to, to go technical, and uh, there's two ways to give. You can do it online or through text to that very awesome some number that we have, that, that go to all number, 978-528-0300. Uh, feel free to go online to mygracepointchurch.org forward slash give, and there you can set up even recurring payments. That is, the, that is the awesomest thing, can I tell you? I even worked with it this week. I was like, oh, I got I to gotta switch it up a little bit to a new account or whatever. So easy. You don't even have to think about it. It comes right out. You know, make it, make it your, make it a plan. Make it a point. Um, I love auto draft. Everything. I even have my water bill on auto draft. <laughs> Quarterly, just, just take it out so I never forget it. Um, it's pretty awesome. And then if you want to text, um, you just want to do the dollar amount, uh, the keyword Grace Point to that same number to nine seven eight five two eight. 0300. We just have a couple of announcements this week. Um, baby dedication is Sunday, August 29th. You want to sign up with me in the big blue VIP table right in the back. I will be there or you can speak uh, directly to Pastor Riza. Um, and we also wanted to give a big thank you to everybody who came out for our community potluck. It was such a huge success. I even did multiple uh, outfit changes because you have to be prepared for everything. I didn't realize that there were sprinklers. We had the time of our life. Everybody played volleyball. We ate. We just did a little bit of everything. I, you guys can thank my suntan for that one. 
Thank you, Pastor, for that outing. That was awesome. And we also wanted to thank um, those who gave their time, their organization, their cooking. You know, like it's a lot of work that goes into these events. Um, you know, people get there early to reserve a, a spot and make sure that every, everything is good. Nope. Um, we, we have a big special thanks to Joselo, Valerie, and Rose for all that they did that day and all that they continue to do. They, it's like the dream team, Rosary. I swear. Uh, they're pretty awesome. So thank you guys for all that you do. We appreciate you. You guys are so close to our hearts. Um, thank you again for everybody who showed up. Uh, let's close out in prayer. Let's all stand, and uh, we're going we're gonna to enjoy the rest of these sunny days, which is pretty awesome. Father God, thank you. Thank you, God, for our church. Thank you for our pastors, for our members, for our friends who have come to visit us today online and in person. God, you have spoken to them. These messages are not in vain. None of this is coincidence. God, you exist and you put these messages in pastor's heart for a reason. I needed that, God. And every single person in here needed that. So th we thank you. We thank you for those love nudges that you give to us every week through our pastor and through our preaching team and through our worship team. Lord, we thank you and we ask you, God, that you prepare us for this week. Help us. Set us up to be the church this week, God. Put people in our way to pray for them. Put people in our path. Let them come face to face with us that we may see you know, your face in every situation that you may lead us through that path, God, so that we may talk to someone, that we may call them. Just bug us. Don't let us sleep until the job is done, Lord. We are asking that you work through us in the way that you know best. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next week. Let me.